Hey, what's up, gamers? Uh, contrary to popular belief, I am not dead. I've just been, you know, busy playing Armored Core 6, Baldur's Gate 3, and Payday 3. Anyways, speaking of video games, uh, Starfield. The game that I can't quite place. The game that I simultaneously love and hate playing. And I'll elaborate a little bit on why later, but this video is something new I'm going to experiment with, so I've got about 8 minutes of first impressions from me and my buddies. And then, after that, there's a little bit of a review, what my more detailed impressions on the game are. So just use the timestamps in the description, or just use the chapter feature. Oh, and one last thing, I have memberships enabled on the channel, and I also have a Patreon. Speaking of which, thank you to LitCorp for being my first ever patron. Your $3 last month funded most of the purchase of a Hot Pocket, one of the big ones, and it was really damn good, so I really appreciate it. One second, fucking Starfield is running a 200 fucking megabyte, or a uh, 100 megabyte update. Oh, wait, what? Wait, never mind, sorry, that's not megabytes! <laughs> Hold on, look at- <laughs> huh? huh? Look at no uh -huh. mic! Preparing game. Oh. 117. It's going really fast. It's already at 16, but. Kill Todd. Oh my god, are you joking? Fuck off. <laughs> okay. Alright, here we go. What is this boring uh, loading screen? This boring uh, main menu screen? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Richard. Where's the battle pass? Here we go. Anyway, shut up. Sh shut up. Shut up. Hey, you, you're finally awake. <laughs> oh my god. Are they gonna start you off? Wait, it literally is just that. Oh, wait. Oxygen's good. Just do what you oh, did last it's, time. It's a mix between the fu you're finally awake and the mirror scene from um, Fallout 4, it looks like it could be. I mean, maybe, except I think I'm in exactly. control. Listen to me. I mean, no, you're in control. We're trying I'm to cross the border, right? Ran into that Imperial ambush, same as us and that horse thief over there. Damn you, Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. Empire was nice and lazy. If it weren't for you, I would've stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. One of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Can I- is there- hold on one second. You already know. You already know. <laughs> Wait, Wait, what? What'd you? What'd you... Oh. Come on. Check on Isabel. Wait, does the the fucking FOV command doesn't work anymore? Might be a different command, even though it's the same engine. Dude, what the? F it's yeah. This is literally the same engine. I can literally. Cl yeah, look. You can. <laughs> oh. Oh, you gotta be joking! Oh, I'm seething! <laughs> point where it's not the same engine anymore. I think. Yeah, everything is built off the framework. Lynn, seriously, uh, there's something really effed up about this. I can't see. <laughs> what is this? Do you see anything? She asks the silent protagonist. <laughs> well, you know, at least it's a fucking silent protagonist this time, and not fucking... Yeah, I like this silent protagonist better. Not fucking Nate Fallout 4. Nate Fallout yeah. 4. Man, oh, fuck but... Nate and Nora. All my homies hate Nate and Nora. Funny. The new hand touches the beat. That's lame. Alright, I guess this is where the character customization comes in. Oh my god, guys, it's the surgeon from Fallout New Vegas! Oh my god. You gotta make Jimbo. Yeah, it literally is. It literally just is. It literally is! It literally is! Also, why did they make you Nikocado Avocado? I was, gonna, I was gonna say, this looks like, this looks like what a chud thinks a feminist looks like. Yeah, wait, hold on. <laughs> like, this is a motherfucker straight out of a Ben Garrison comic. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
I have not I mean, seen okay, her face here's the in thing. years. Here's the thing. Objective improvement. Hairstyles already look fantastic. Yeah, dude, the Skyrim hairstyles are so garbage. I have to install a mod for it every time. Yeah. Hairstyles are already fantastic. Yeah, literally, it's no longer a, just some weird uh, bowl cut that just, like, it's so greasy. Holy it just shit. sticks to your head. She bad. What? Yeah, true. Holy what shit, she kind of bad. She bad as hell. What the hell? Like, I'm gonna go. They did it for way too long and then they stopped. And I'm Ooh, sad. Yeah, 2024 was the last one, I think. I don't care. No, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! How do I stop it? This is just another order. Inventory! Notes! Supervisor's log! Stop! There we go. <laughs> the classic Bethesda tradition of stealing everything not nailed down and somehow so everyone being true. fine with it. The what fucking thought just popped in my head of like being in the fucking like whatever like starter area this is and trying to crouch to steal some shit and you just get a pop up with suspicious actions not allowed in casing mode. <laughs> oh my god. Need some coffee. I just took that <laughs> man's steal <laughs> the fucking sandwich that had a bite taken out of this right in oh my front look. of the motherfucker. He commented on it! <laughs> oh my god. Waiting for the you are over encumbered and cannot run. Just all mm -hmm. the fucking cards. Mm -hmm. yep. Good lord. I think... Yes, she would know. Alright, sorry, I was I was busy stealing everything from your uh Don't put your helmet on. Alright. I don't think it's gonna let me through if I don't put my helmet on. Bruh. I think you should run out into the middle of this barren Maybe it's wasteland. Mouse three. My mouse three doesn't work. Oh. It it gave you a tooltip earlier about it. Yeah, you should run oh, out yeah. into the wasteland and see how long you oh, wait. survive. I can literally just mouse wheel down. Alright. Hold on. Oh, okay. You already know. Quick saving. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. So are you just like running in a direction until you die? Pretty much. That's what Rachel told me <laughs> to do. Also, uh, one thing that okay, okay. Here's the thing. I think, I think that I have, I have, I've proven the point. I don't think the game is gonna stop me. I don't think the game is at any point going to be like, hey, you can't go at- oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, maybe it will stop me. You're gonna fall out of the map and die. No, look, there's a map- look, there's a- there's a map border. The city is quarantined! You can't, you can't leave. leave! Oh my Whoa. god. <laughs> Bro, thank you, Bosco. So, you found- Aww. <laughs> Damn. This game sucks. It's Molly. What do you mean you can't jump on him? He's perfectly platform shaped. Yeah! Literally. Oh, yep. The pirates that were on your ass earlier. Yeah. They're back. The game has auto. Uh, th these guns have auto lock on them. Literally, just really dangerous gimbals. Can you is there a free look? Can you, yeah, can you circle strafe as well? Can you do the thing in the enemy danger? Like, God, I'm looking at this and immediately I'm feeling like the ship combat's gonna be ass. Captain Sam, Protocol Indigo. Wait, they said, wait, what? I mean, okay, they did have last names in fucking Fallout 4, but still based. They had first names. Did they? Yeah. Nothing more. Maybe I'm dumb. All right, this is the actual reviewy section. So, first impressions, the graphics are phenomenal. I'm surprised that this is a Bethesda game, to be honest, but thankfully, the performance reminds me of that quite frequently. I don't believe Todd when he tells me that they optimize this game for PC, but given how much more stable this game has been than the past 10 years of Bethesda re releases, I'm almost ready to believe it. Or, I would be if there wasn't a massive amount of evidence to point to how unoptimized the game is, especially if you don't have AMD hardware. 
Voice acting is genuinely fantastic. There's more than 10 voice actors for once, so that's nice. Funny that that's the standard to hold Bethesda to, but whatever. The combat is actually really enjoyable. It can get bullet spongy, and weapons seem to increase stat-wise based on the level of enemy that drops them, meaning that a gun picked up 10 levels ago won't do shit now, but... It's okay, since this isn't a major issue, just a minor complaint. Okay, but before I continue, let's sprinkle in some of the stuff I don't like. Remember, some cynicism is always healthy when you sprinkle it on top of positivity. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm dumb and wrong about that, but there's nobody here to tell me I am, so, uh... Anyways, yeah, the game has a lot I really don't like about it, and downright hate. For example, almost everything involving space. The fact that you can't seamlessly travel from one planet to another without loading screens sucks. The way space travel works is just a series of loading screens until you get to where you're going via fast travel. This sucks out any feeling of actual independence from the player, forcing all space travel to be reduced down to menus, especially planetary exploration, since the game limits how far you can travel from your landing zone, forcing you into the fast travel menu to explore more zones of the planet. Plus, you can't even fly your ship in atmosphere, like a real vehicle. 90% of the actual flying is handled for you via the cutscenes and loading screens. Here's the thing. My issues with this game right now were a lot of little things, all stacking up into one big issue. Is this a good space game? <laughs> God, no. I would rather play Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, or even No Man's Sky before this game if I wanted an interesting space exploration slash adventure slash simulation experience. Because... For everything that Starfield does right, another game has done it infinitely better. Cargo missions? Star Citizen has Bethesda beat with the interactability and immersion. Delivering packages feels like I actually have impact, since you might have to pick it up and deliver the object manually. Passenger missions? Well, while they feel about the same in Starfield compared to Elite Dangerous, there's a huge difference in the in-between time, the journey from point A to B. Elite Dangerous' space travel is tangible, immersive, feels like I'm actually taking these people somewhere. Same thing with the cargo missions. Makes me feel like I'm a space trucker. Whereas with Starfield, it's accept mission, open star map, select destination, fast travel, get paid. So much less effort, which may be a good thing for a casual player, it lacks any depth or feeling. It's tedious and boring to a degree that makes it not even worth doing. Which is ironic, because this is really some of the best content the game has to offer, is the side missions. Say what you will about Elite Dangerous, it may or may not be your cup of tea, but the travel is a major part of the game, for better or for worse. When my options for travel is either a menu with basically no effect from my gameplay, or 20 minutes of traveling from point A to B, I will always pick the second option, since those moments of sheer awe when entering a new system with a really wacky looking star, it really just makes the journey worth it. Oh yeah, one other thing. Starfield's star map sucks. A lot of the stars overlap with each other, and the worst part is, the field of movement on the camera is incredibly limited. It reminds me of Elite Dangerous star map, except it lacks any of the complex controls to fully understand where you lie in the universe. One last thing, I promise before I get into what I really like about this game. Exploration of planetary bodies is ass. When you land on a planet, the game forces you into a small outdoor cell that, when you hit the border, forces you to either travel back to your ship or open the star map to explore more of the planet. Now, I will say that the game's exploration feels significantly more interesting than almost any other space game, but this is at the massive cost of the tiny explorable area, which makes me feel caged in more than anything in Star Citizen or Elite Dangerous, which, for as barren as the landscapes are in Elite Dangerous, at least they let you walk around until you run out of O2. Oh yeah, that reminds me, O2 and a ship fuel don't exist as resources to be managed. It's literally just stamina in both forms. They both recharge, which makes movement and exploration inconsequential. Which is fair, I guess. It just kind of sucks that I never have to refill my ship, or make sure that I keep my oxygen in mind when I'm going mining on a mineral-rich, but low-atmosphere planet. Sorry, I lied again. I guess it was two things. So, what do I like? Well, this is probably the best Bethesda game to release in the past 13 years, which isn't hard, since fucking three of those have been Skyrim. Four if you count the anniversary update, but like, I guess it was an update, not a new purchasable version of the game. Hey, uh, this is, uh, post-editing game reel. Uh, I got it wrong. Uh, turns out, actually, four of them are Skyrim. Uh, once for VR and once for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and five if you count the Anniversary Edition. Uh, two of those are Fallout 4. 
one is the base game and then the other is VR. Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe that I would possibly let it slip my mind that Bethesda just loves re-releasing the same game over and over and over again. I, I, I genuinely don't know how that could have slipped my mind. A measly three re-releases? God, how, how, how silly of me. And here's the thing, for a modern release of a Bethesda game, this is fucking amazing. Now, I played completely unmodded, and my list of complaints are minimal. One, I hated the default FOV, which is easily changeable via the user.ini. But not in the console anymore, apparently. And two, the performance was kind of shit in certain areas, usually populated or high detail areas. And while Todd is gonna say it's a next gen game requiring next gen hardware, we now know that that is utter bullshit, because the exclusivity deal means that anybody playing it on non-AMD hardware is going to have the game run like shit. The game had some serious 30 FPS issues in a lot of areas, but indoor areas tended to perform better. I've also heard that DLSS mods makes things better, but again, I didn't have mods. Anyways, the game plays really well, and for a Bethesda game, it's really solid. Mainly, my issues with the game stemmed from getting to grips with what this game really was. To be honest, after about hour 4 or 5, I kind of gave up for the night and went to bed. And coming back the next day, I proceeded to play about 5 more hours, getting to a really cool 0G gunfight, where my weapons actually knocked me backwards, forcing some actual strategy with weapon selection and when to actually fire. And then by hour 10, I was getting exhausted again, until I began to dive into the side content, base building, and ship building. By hour 12, the game finally got its hooks into me, which is not a good sign to be honest. I genuinely think that Bethesda should have scrapped their main quest for a more open, character-driven story, since my attempts to do the main quest just made my brain want to jump out and run away. There's nothing engaging there. I genuinely believe that the best way to play this game would be to install an alternative start mod and get thrown randomly into the universe and just dick around with what side content is there. Because the main story is really not interesting at all, and could really kill your will to play the game. It kinda sucks that the ship the game gives you is as good as it is. There's very little to work for there. While a lot of games like Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen require significant effort to scrounge up the money for a ship upgrade, or even No Man's Sky requires you to repair damaged ships, the starter ship basically requires no upgrades. It is perfectly adequate as is. Now, once again, comparing Starfield, to any of these is a little unfair. I think it's warranted since it feels like a diet version of all three of these games mixed together very poorly. Comparisons have been and will continue to be made, but even just from a gameplay standpoint, the fact that the starter ship is so large and perfectly adequate for any real challenge makes it feel like nothing. When a personal starship should really be an insane achievement for anyone, it should be an insanely high standard of wealth and freedom, or at least one of those things, take your pick. But I will say, the ship building is fantastic. I'd say around 25% of my total playtime has been customizing my character and building my ship. They really outdid themselves with these systems, to be honest. The only reason I'm doing most of the side content is to fuel a crippling ship customization addiction. Now, if only I could fly my ship in any meaningful sense. The character creator is actually good now too, by the way. The hairstyles look fantastic, there's been a lot of added depth, and simultaneously a lot has been stripped away from the game. For example, the facial blemishes from Fallout 4 no longer really exist. You get one scar and that's it. No more mixing and matching bruises and scars to make a badass beat up protagonist. But overall, 10 times better character creation than Fallout 4, 76, or Skyrim. Uh, the random encounters are neat. There isn't just ground encounters, but encounters in space too. Bounty hunters if you're wanted, space stations, and just friendly travelers. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I think there is actually a lot of randomly generated content to an extent. For example, the zero-g casino shootout I had was a random encounter, I believe, which means that theoretically the station will pop up somewhere else for you. And the planet exploration feels randomly generated. While I'm sure that these planets are curated with specific content, as in fauna, flora, and points of interest, there's no way they made all these cells when the areas you can visit can be selected at such inconsistent distances from each other. Here's my theory. Each planet have biomes, and these biomes have seeds to look similar enough with the same sort of fauna or flora, but they are all randomly generated so as to allow the player to see some semblance of diversity in locations. If anyone can clarify though, that would be a big help. Space combat feels like if Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky had a bastard child. It's alright, I guess. Especially boarding can be fun. But seriously, it feels like the worst aspects of Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky blended together. 
Plus, boarding in Star Citizen is just so much cooler, with actual zero-g EVA travel to actually get onto a vessel. The ground combat, once again, is passable at best. Infinitely better than Fallout 4, since ammo scarcity isn't that big of an issue, but I also haven't fought any legendary enemies, if they even exist, so it could get really bad later down the line. Now, this last claim I have zero evidence for, but if my senses aren't failing me, this could be big if true. There are a bunch of mission boards around, and these have side missions like bounty hunts, delivery missions, supply missions, and passenger transport missions, and all of these are easily the best parts of the game, and they are theoretically repeatable forever. Which is honestly awesome, since it's easily the best part of the game. Now, if I'm wrong about this, I'll eat my words later, but if not, then this is possibly the best way for Bethesda to have implemented a huge amount of replayable content. And that's about it. That's my first impressions on the game. I don't have much else to say besides it's probably the best Bethesda game released in 13 years, and if you can get over the grueling first 6 to 12 hours to get really immersed in the exploration, side content, and shipbuilding, then it's an awesome experience. A solid mm, 6 out of 10 with mods? At least it's fucking playable vanilla. Anyways, I have some personal life stuff getting settled into, and then I may or may not end up streaming Armored Core 6 and Starfield, I don't know, we'll see how things go. But for now, this is all the game real content you people get.